You're in a jam, in a jam, in a jam, in a day of jam. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Scott from Collective. I'm excited to introduce our new show, Data Jams, where we talk through some of the big challenges you see with your data and help you with solutions. I'm here with Grant today and we're going to talk about the Tabular Model Definition Language or TMDL and how it's going to introduce version control in Power BI for the first time for real and it's a long time coming. Happy to be here on the first episode of Data Jams. I'm ready to dig into TMDL. All right, Grant, why don't you tell us what version control is? Version control is the process of maintaining a single source of truth when it comes to your data model, as well as working with others to include any incremental changes to that data model. And I feel like the real important piece here is working with others, because when you're working on any one file, it's not that hard to just save it, <laughs> replace it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm trying to do something at the same time you're doing something, it gets really sticky because you might have something that alters what's going to happen to what I'm working on or vice versa. So version control to me is not just like the file, but it's also the process to get there. For sure. Power BI has been a great tool to develop with to get solutions for our partners, for working with clients, for getting them analytic solutions. But there's one thing that is really hard and that's when I'm trying to work with someone else on my team or with the client. And we've got one version over here that he's added some things to and my version where I've added some new measures to. It just makes it really hard to combine that information so we can have just one version of the truth. And so that's something we always preach about, one version of the truth. Well, Microsoft has made it really hard before, and it sounds like they've listened and they've said, okay, we're gonna bring on this tabular model definition language, and you're gonna be able to not only separate out like the individual components that we want to update, but it'll let us, you know, we've got Grant over here working on something, I'm working on something. We'll be able to merge those copies together so that we can have an updated version with, with both of our changes, and those versions will be under their, our control so that they're very well maintained. It's a really good point, Scott. Uh big problem I run into all the time is no matter how good of a communicator you are, uh, there are bound to be some changes that fall through the cracks when uh, maintaining different versions of reports. So very excited for this new feature. So at the SQL Bits conference in Wales off the coast of Britain, they came out with this announcement that Microsoft is going to officially support TMDL. It's been in the open source for a while, so you've been able to see it and interact with it using PBI tools. But now Microsoft's going to support it, meaning all these other third party tools like Tabular Editor that I use all the time, ALM Toolkit. We're going to be able to use this model definition language with those tools that we use. So this announcement was huge and I'm really looking forward to working with it. So Grant, when are we gonna be able to use TMDL? So this feature is actually available right now as a preview feature in Power BI. It's also available in Tabular Editor 2. Um, as far as I know, we don't have an exact date of when it's going to be released uh, to the public, but hopefully it's soon. So I was on Reddit the other day and there was a question about it on Reddit and there was a comment from the creator of Tabular Editor 3 who said it was available in Tabular Editor 2 but it's not available yet in Tabular Editor 3 because it's paid and he doesn't want to support it because it's new <laughs> and he thinks he's going to get a lot of tickets on the paid version so he's happy to put it in the free version Tabular Editor 2 so we can test it out there but for the tabular editor three, it sounds like once Microsoft has worked out the kinks and is supporting it, then it'll be available in tabular editor three. So is this Microsoft native or is it third party open source? Like what is it? So it's actually kind of both. Uh, it was developed at first by a third party, but now Microsoft is choosing to support it and integrate it into their uh, apps as well. So it's kind of both, but it, and eventually it will be a native Power BI solution. All right, that all sounds awesome. So what benefits are we going to see from this? 
So I would say the major benefit is being able to edit a um, tabular model just based on text. So everything will be defined from tables to columns to measures. And then in that text file, you can just easily create a new measure, change a column type, et cetera. And it makes it a lot faster than before when you'd have to actually go into Power BI and do this or go to Visual Studio and compare versions of a tabular model and add in whatever changes were missing. Uh, so I would say the biggest benefit is just being able to quickly and efficiently go in and uh, make any updates that you need to. Yeah, that's great. And I think the way it's going to be set up is by object. So although there have mm -hmm. been other attempts at version control, it's been serialized in the objects folders that have been created to store the text hasn't been based like on a column or on a table. So it was split, but now it's being split by objects. So if you just want to edit one thing, you can go in there and edit it without messing up somebody else. And I think that's mm -hmm. for me, one of the huge parts. For sure, yeah, definitely a great benefit. All right, Grant, I'm having some flashbacks of all these clients that we've worked on with some very tough version control. Do uh, you want to just remind me of some of these attempts we've done and, and kind of why they weren't working so well? Sure. So, I mean, there's really, before this, there was really no good way to do version control. Um, there were clients I've worked on where there was a notes page on the front page of the data set that just listed out each version and what changes were made with that version. There's uh, other versions such or other ways of doing it, such as just like creating new versions and labeling them as a new version. So like 1.9 to 2.0, but it wouldn't actually include any of the changes that were made. So you'd have to go back and look for them manually. Uh, also the experiences doing it in a Visual Studio with ADO repos, which requires a lot of communication and is also kind of finicky at times. So there's really not been a great way to do this in the past. Yeah, that reminds me. So on those two, two points, like the Visual Studio obviously is built for version control, but for supported projects because a Power BI file is a binary file. It just, you go to open it in Visual Studio and it says, you can't open this. You gotta, <laughs> you just gotta open it in PBIX and P Power BI. And then let me know when you're done, you can check it back in. And it's nice because it does do something, but it's not integrated. And then the other style where we just have notes on the page and kind of like a folder with the old versions. Like you said, it's good for maybe one or two folks collaborating and like a smaller project. But if you're talking, working on the same model and then having changes that still need to get integrated, you can still really only have one person working at a time or else you're gonna have to dive into the other version, figure out what's different and then like create one new consolidated version. So we've had some, we've had some clients that we just don't have a good answer for. They ask us, oh, what's your best practice? And we have these like list of things we've tried, but nothing great. And I feel like this tabular model definition language should change that and allow us to really provide what we hope to provide to someone, which is real version control with constant integration, constant delivery. Yeah, it's great having a, a method of version control that's supported by Microsoft now. And I mean, we've all been there before where we've made changes to a model and they've been overwritten by someone else unknowingly. And then you have to go in and make the changes again. So it, Microsoft has just made it so much easier. So I'm really happy that they decided to support this feature. Uh, it should be a big help and a big time saver. Yeah. Thinking of that too, I mean, we're both getting really handy with tabular editor. And I think this is going to be just a great plugin feature for that as well, because mm -hmm. it's really saved us some time on creating measures or relationships or, or tables even. But the fact that we can maybe share information from it while using this third party tool and have the, you know, supported version control, I'm just really excited that it not only works natively, but with these third party tools as well. Definitely. It's it's nice having something that's separate from Power BI that you can just easily go in and make edits. Uh, when you do stuff in Power BI, even though it's a, a great program, uh, there's so many clicks involved and a lot of different navigation steps that you have to take. Whereas 
when it's just laid out for you in text, it's so much easier to just go in and create a new measure or edit exactly what you want to edit. And you don't have to do all the clicking around and navigating like you'd have to do in Power BI. Yeah. So I'm just really excited that it's happening. Uh, I'm excited for our clients mm -hmm. that we're going to be able to offer them something that's uh, version control for real and not just kind of a workaround. And I'm excited that it's going to make our jobs easier, of course. <laughs> Always excited yeah, for that. All right. So I think we understand what it is. So what are some key considerations some of our clients should think about and what should they want to do to get started with TMDL? Uh, that's a great question. So a consideration that I would take into account is if your model is actually ready to be developed on by multiple people at the same time, if you have a really messy model that will take time to explain to another developer and let them know the different ins and outs and nuances of it, it's probably not the best solution for you at this time. However, TMDL can help you uh, more efficiently like rebuild your tabular model and make it ready for uh, multiple developers at the same time. Uh, the biggest thing with making sure that your model is actually ready to be developed on by multiple people is making it easy to navigate and having naming conventions that are pretty self-explanatory. Otherwise, you will spend a good amount of time teaching them everything about the model, even though it isn't organized well and it it's not a very efficient use of your time. Yeah, so we're thinking not only should your model be kind of prepared for multiple developers, but prepare it to be just a successful model in general, because this tool can help you make sure that everything makes sense, meaning naming, um, how things are set up, making it easy for anyone to jump in and start helping you on this project, whether it's a consultant or a new hire. So consider like, is your model in the way you want it to be set up just for success, but also is it set up for, you know, help in the future from whoever's coming on because everyone knows that models can be sort of like personal, like whoever set them up, sometimes they take shortcuts or, or naming conventions that are non-traditional and they, they might not document it. Well, hopefully this new TMDL will make it easier for all these things to be very uh, thorough and, and well understood and, and make it very extensible for whoever's coming on to help in the future. Yeah, uh, this is a very useful tool and it's a great means to editing your model. But if you don't have a solid Power BI foundation and know the concepts well, uh, it's just going to get even trickier. So I would say this is probably more for seasoned users, but also it's not that hard to teach to people. Uh, it's Microsoft and uh, the third party developers have made it very easy to follow along and understand. So it's a great means for actually editing your model, but you have to make sure that you have that solid foundation first. All right. Thanks for joining me, Grant. This was a great discussion. Yeah, agreed. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I feel very special being on the inaugural episode of Data Jams. If you're stuck in a data jam, we'd love to help in your situation. Leave us a comment and we will give you some expert recommendations to get out of that data jam.